What is up, people of YouTube? I'm your host, Vernon. This is Floyd Lamb Park. Let's fish that. All right, ladies and gents, it is the month of August. That means that finally fishing has now been on air for three years. And to thank you guys, the viewers, for all the support you guys give me, I would like to do another competition. Now up for grabs are some Amazon gift vouchers and maybe a fishing trip. I'm not quite sure yet. We'll see as we go along. But if you're interested in uh, going into the competition, there will be four videos in the month of August and each one of the four videos will have a question. You have to go down in the comments and answer those questions in all four of the videos to get entered into the competition. Now for this video, the question is quite simply, you have to go down in the comments and you have to write, I would like to catch, and then whatever you would like to catch, whether that be carp, bass, Pikachu, or even a shark, whatever it is you like to catch, go down there in the comments and tell me. Now remember, you have to answer all four of the questions to actually get entered into the competition. But good luck to everyone that's entering. But for now, let's get to the actual fishing. Now the plan for today is going to try and find some carp here at Floyd Lamb Park. Now lately it's been pressured, quite a lot of people fishing for carp. But when it comes to carp fishing, some of the pro anglers or the pro carp fishermen, they will see me as quite a novice when it comes to fishing, especially in places like South Africa or Europe or even Japan. The way that I fish for them with the corn and the little pack bait, that is considered to be a novice style of fishing. And that is quite true. So today I want to try something different. I want to look at some different baits for fishing. And for that reason, today I want to focus on boilies. But before we get into what a boilie is, let's get some baits in the water. All right, so I'm allowed to use two rods. That means we can have a little control as well. On the one rod, we're going to use the new setup. On the other one, we're using my old regular trusted carp baits. That way I also know whether uh, if I'm catching fish, whether it works on both or whether it's just the one, or if I don't catch any fish, I know that something else is wrong. So on my normal trusty old carp setup, we have some oats and corn pack bait with some corn. Just gonna cast that out there. That's gonna be my chum, my feeding area that's gonna draw in the fish. And on my second setup, I'm opting for a Carolina rig style. Uh, I have some beads on here just to ensure that this big heavy weight does not break the knots or my little swivels. And this big heavy weight is all I'm gonna have for weight. That's why I'm using a bit of a bigger weight to get this casted out there. The idea with this, I'm not having some big pack baits that I'm casting out. I'm casting this out for precision, trying to get this close to the pack baits so that the carp can find the baits a lot easier. So this is not bombing it out there. This is more for precision casting. And on here, I quite simply have a hook. And on the hook, I have a little bait screw. Now, normally when using something like boilies, you want to use something like a hair rig, but I don't have all the necessary equipment. I don't have braids or a bait needle. So I'm improvising and using my little bait screws. This is something I use when bass fishing to uh, use on some of the soft plastics, but that will also work for this. All I'm gonna do is we're gonna put our baits on that little thing. All right, I'm starting off with a bit bigger bait thinking we want some good carp. We're not gonna try for the small ones. So I'm putting on a little pop-up boily. The way this works, this will float in there. The fish comes and it sucks. And that suction sucks in the entire bait, leaving the hook point exposed to hook the fish. That's the idea behind the baits, but let's get him out into the water. All right, so that's our two rods now baited out into the water. We have our little bobbers or policemen on there just to see if something happens to the line but they both have their alarms, but they will scream if something takes the bait. I also have an extra uh, cord wrapped around the two rods. Last time I was out here, a fish actually ripped one of my rods into the water. So just for some added safety, I'm putting on some uh, extra precautions to try and keep my rods. Okay, but now the only thing we can do is wait for some fish to show up, but let's quickly have a look at what a boilie actually is. So the first thing you need to know about carp fishing is it's not meant to be rushed. It takes a long time. Now that is also something that's reflected in the baits designed for carp fishing. And that's especially true for something like boilies. 
Now, what is a boilie? Well, basically, it's something that either made from uh, cornmeal or fish meal or mixtures of it with all sorts of flavor enhancers, and it makes a nice little dough, and that dough gets boiled, hence the name boilies. So this is a bait that was designed to last longer, and it's something that's a bit more robust so that the small fish, uh, they don't steal your baits when tumming the waters with something like corn, uh, you get all sorts of fish feeding on the corn, whereas something like boilie, they come in different sizes. You can match the hatch and try and find a bigger size boilie that these small fish can't eat, guaranteeing that your baits are in the water or carp to find. Now, boilies do come in different flavors, but they also do come in different styles. You do get freeze-dried boilies, something where it's boiled and it goes into a sealed bag and it gets frozen immediately and then you get air dried boilies and that is something you have to do you have to dry out the boilies otherwise they don't last that long they get all moldy and stuff but here in america you're more likely to find the dried stuff especially moving it over borders and stuff they tend to stock the dried boilies and when you're looking for a boilie you're looking for something soft if it's a rock hard boilie the fish won't eat it you have to be able to take that boilie in your hand, squeeze it, compress it, and it needs to give way. If it's too hard for you to do that with your fingers, it's too hard for the fish to eat. But let's have a look at some boilies. It might get easier to understand. So over here, I have a different variety of flavors and sizes of boilies. Uh, I have some 15 millimeters, and this one is a 20 millimeters. So they do come in all sorts of different sizes. And they come in different flavors as well. This one is a blood worm, I have a crab one, this one is tutti frutti, and then I have a scopex one. But essentially, this is what a boil is. This is one of the 15 millimeters. They do get a lot bigger than this. This is one of the smaller ones you'll find. But this is the little pellet that I'm talking about. If I'm squeezing with all my power, this thing is rock hard. I cannot break it. Before you can use this little boilie again, you have to rehydrate them. Now you get all sorts of flavor enhancers and all sorts of crazy stuff to rehydrate them. But that is way above my pay grade. I don't know enough about that. All I did with mine is I used some water, not a lot of water. You don't want to cover them in water, just a tiny bit of water at the bottom. And these little things soak them up. I used a little plastic container like this. And all I did was add a few drops of water at the bottom and these little boilies after an entire day, these little ones, the ones that have been rehydrated, they're a lot softer, a lot easier to put a bait needle through and put on your hooks. And the general idea would be to use some of this as a attractant as well, throwing it out into the water where you have your baits so the fish can start feeding on them. Now the great thing about rehydrating these little boilies as well, is as soon as you do that, they actually start to release their flavor a lot better. If they're rock hard, they don't release their flavor. Whereas these wet ones, they actually start releasing their flavor when they're in the water, attracting fish to them. And that's the thing about these boilies. They were designed to be in the water for a long time, constantly releasing flavor, drawing fish in. So the idea behind these little things, they stay in the water for a while. It takes a couple of hours for the fish to find them, but the fish do love the flavors. Now, like I said, I have quite a few different flavors. This one in particular, the blood worm and the crab, I'm not going to use them out there today. The simple reason being I'm thinking the crab and the blood worm flavors, that's something that might attract some catfish as well. Catfish do also eat the boilies. That's the only other fish out there that will target the boilies directly would be catfish. Now, generally, the way carp fishing works, you're not going to be doing this for an hour or two. So if you're planning on doing some boilie fishing during your lunch, that's a bad idea. That's not how it works. Carp fishing was meant for a long extended period of fishing. It's something normally like going for an entire weekend. You cast your baits in the exact same spot, get a feeding zone going, get all the fish drawn towards you spend hours out there, have your bait soaking for hours and start catching the fish. Now that's not what I'm doing today. I'm going to here for a few hours. Hopefully we'll get some fish. Now I do know of a few different spots around the lake where people have been fishing for carp regularly, making little feeding zones. 
but I'm not going to intrude in their spaces. I'll try and make a feeding space of my own by throwing out some baits in the same spot, trying to see if we can get some of the fish that's passing by to stick around the area and find my baits. All right, so it's now been an hour and a half and we just had our first hit on the corn. And that little bobber just sank down. Uh, the reason for that is the fish are swimming around looking for food. It takes them quite a while to find your baits. Uh, that's why it's always a good idea to cast in the exact same spot, make a feeding zone. You draw in the fish to that particular spot. But if it takes this long and you're not getting any fish, maybe thinking of where the fish might be would be a better idea. For instance, lots of birds in the grass, always food going to drop down. So maybe the fish might be closer to the reeds, so that might be a better place to find fish. But also remember, if you do get a fish, it might be easier to get snagged on some of the reeds and stuff. So we're going to leave the baits out there for a while more. Uh, unless they are screaming, we're not going to reel them in. We do trust that these baits will stay on there for long. That hit we got might be a turtle, might be a different fish. We'll have to wait and see. If we don't get any more action, within another hour and a half, we'll move the baits closer to the reeds. Getting quite a lot of movement on that little bobber moving up and down. Some of it is the wind, but every once in a while we get a good proper tug. That means something's busy packing at the baits. So we'll just wait for him to get the hook. This is why I'm using the little bobber or the little policeman. I can see when something's happening and the way this is lifting and dropping and lifting and dropping, it tells me something's busy eating on the pack bait. So maybe a little terrapin or something, might be some fish. We'll just have to wait and see whether that thing pulls or not. Alright, so we've now had two hours of something constantly messing with my baits, getting all sorts of tugs, but clearly it's not carp that grabs and swim off, it's something else stealing my baits. So we're going to bring in this rod and try something a bit different. There we have it, not a single bait left, only some algae on my hooks, nothing left, no corn, nothing. That's why the boilies work pretty well, smaller fish aren't going to target them. Alright, so this time around, on the bottom hook we got a little boilie, top hook we have our corn, and then inside my pack bait I also put a few boilies, I'm going to cast that out there, see if that makes a difference. Alright, so I moved spots, uh, quite a few simple reasons biggest of which so I can keep an eye on that big thunderstorm that's approaching. I'm not afraid of a little rain but the cameras don't like the water that much. So they move to a different spot where I can see that approaching and this particular spot this is where I almost lost that rod of mine. This is where the fish pulled it into the water but I want to be fishing this particular area because this is where people have been catching quite a lot of carp in the last couple of months because everyone's throwing out baits in this same spot. This is a feeding area for the fish, so the fish tend to stick in this area. That's why this is the best spot for me to hopefully get a fish on the little boilies. Alright ladies and gents, I wanted to try something new, fish a bait that I've never caught fish on before and lo and behold I still haven't caught any fish on it. Thing is I've only been fishing out here for five hours now, five hours is a very short time to be fishing for carp but even though I didn't get any carp on the little boilies, I also didn't get any carp on the normal corn so maybe it's just a bad day for fishing, might be the big storm approaching, whatever the reason that's no excuse for saying boilies don't work, lots of people swear by them especially in places where the fishing pressure is quite high, really seem to work. But I wanted to learn something new about carp fishing. Now, yes, I am still a novice at carp fishing. I still need to learn quite a lot. But I do hope that you learned something in this video along with me. And maybe you will even consider using some boilies when you go fishing. But I think that's going to be it for this video. I want to thank you guys for following me out here. 
and i also want to remind you to answer the questions if you want to enter the competition if you learned something from this video please do give me a little thumbs up if you've not subscribed to the channel yet consider doing so hitting the big red subscribe button joining my community and of course if you have any questions feel free to ask them down in the comments as well this is just a very basic video about explaining some boilies i don't know a lot about them but if you have any questions i'll see what i can answer all right guys but thank you for watching like always I'll see you next time